Welcome back to New Rockstars. This is The Big Question, the show that gives you too much information about all your Marvel superheroes' wardrobes and their wardrobe malfunctions, mm. more importantly. Give you and me a good old rub. <laughs> yeah, boy. We're going there today. I'm Eric Voss, here with <laughs> Philip Molina. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm wearing shorts and no one will ever know. Uh, good. I'm just glad you're wearing something down there because I had been burned before in past uh, uh, remote shoots. And that Rogue Theory episode, oh god. Oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes were bulging. Anyway, uh, you want to know what the big question is? Yeah, let's do it. Speaking of average size questions, Jason uh, on Twitter, uh, at JTreeSap, uh, wants to know, how do hero suits interact with their normal clothes? And I'm going to kind of rephrase this, uh, because interacting with clothes it doesn't apply to all the heroes, and some of them don't wear clothes, and some of them right. do. So instead, I think what he's getting at is the impracticalities of how the suit meets clothes, <laughs> or being alive, or needing to survive a fight, or any of these things. So I want to ask you, this is a tweak on Jason's question, which major superheroes have just like the worst, most <laughs> impractical suits, and like specifically, like this is just Philip here, not Jason. Jason, I'm not throwing you in here, but like, how do they pee? Do they pee? And like, oh, okay. okay, some can pee, but like, can they poop? This is very oh, important man. to me in for a future uh, uh, occupation I'm considering. Important to only you, <laughs> but it's it's one that we will answer. I'm glad I got this question because we just broke down Spider-Man Homecoming in our ongoing Infinity Saga rewatch series. And to me, one of the standout moments from that movie is Peter Parker's awkwardness with this suit. Like he has to strip off his clothes in uh, public and then like put it on, but he's like excited. They, it was the first time in the MCU, or at least with Spider-Man where it was really thought out what it means for this guy to have to stretch this thing on his body every time he goes out in the world. It's like minutes, precious minutes. Yeah. It takes so much time. How many deaths are, are getting on his hands as a result of this? Can you hear me? So, you know, we used to do a segment uh, in a bunch of New Rockstars breakdowns called the New Rockstars, was it the Fashion Roundup? Oh, God. The Red Carpet Recap? I don't remember what we called it. I remember banning it. But let's do one of these. No, I banned it. <laughs> Oh, the rules have changed, but the players are the same. All right, let's 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 start with Spider-Man because that's what we were just talking about, right? Okay, so his suit type, he has this form-fitting cloth that's most likely spandex or something similar. Well, the suit that he gets from Tony Stark in uh, Civil War and the one that he uses in Homecoming and beyond, it has some inner wiring, some tech. It has like a chip and boards in it. It, it can you know light up. It, it has thermals in it. And then he upgraded to the Iron Spider in Infinity War yeah. and Endgame. It's a pretty cool suit we don't want to hate on it too much on the iron spider suit all the spider-man suits are i mean cool the iron spider way. suit is like on a whole other level this is like yeah. like you're going from especially the first suit his hoodie basically with like goggles uh -huh. but no matter what spider-man suit you're dealing with it, usually it's not stealthy unless it's the stealth version of the suit in far from home the night monkey night monkey yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh it's all one piece so it's sweaty he usually has to wear it underneath everything but the thing is in in homecoming he does take off his clothes but it shrink wraps around him as a oh, vacuum right, right. sealant so he doesn't have to wear no. nothing underneath it but i think he wants to take off his clothes so that he doesn't have that lumpy silhouette yeah. i think he wants it to be clinging to the skin I think Peter Parker, it's like just telling that he's like a kid and he like, he like wants to look cool and he wants Flash Thompson to say like cool things about him. Yeah. But if he had like lumps from like, you know when you have your cell phone in your pocket in a picture or right. in your keys in the other pocket and you're like, I look like I have a ton of grapes in my pants. Or like if you've ever worn your hanger in your shirt by accident, he doesn't <laughs> want to look like that. I had a late start that day and I had to rush to the interview. <laughs> and I got it. Here I am at New Rock Stars. Yeah. Oh, hanger boy, the nickname is gone. <laughs> okay, so some examples of this, right? He does lose his backpack in that scene in Spider-Man Homecoming, so he has to like go home to change. And that ends up being right. what outs him to Ned and has an awkward moment with Aunt May when she thinks like, oh, my son is just like shirtless in his boxers hanging out with his best right. friend. Not because gonna judge this. He, but. he doesn't have super speed, so that yeah. actually is a huge downfall of if you have to change into this outfit if you don't have something to change back into you are stuck presenting yourself as spider-man right 
And uh, part of the reason why he takes off his clothes is because, like, that's part of his identity. And maybe he doesn't want to wear, like, his school clothes underneath it because he doesn't want to, like, out himself. Where people are, like, taking pictures, like, wait, he was wearing this weird collared shirt. It was clearly, like, a collared shirt and a belt and pants right. that he was wearing underneath that. Like, I could right. tell by his by the cut of his jeans who that Spider-Man is. That's like Queens. a, what is that, a, a old racist uh, mom who doesn't <laughs> want you hanging out with that boy? I can tell by the cut of his jeans. He's, he's a party boy. Oh, not everything in the past is... Well, actually, you know what? Everything old is racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The moon landing yes. was racist as hell. <laughs> it's one small step for man, one giant leap for... White people. <laughs> Just saying, no black guys on the moon. Also, something we should point out, something that sucks about the Homecoming Era suit, is it has, I would say, too many features. You should not give a 16-year-old kid an instant kill feature. Even if it is blocked by the training wheels protocol, it's still dangerous to have that somewhere in the suit. Yeah, as an option. And and let him know, it's like, hey, look, Peter, this is a loaded gun. It, it You know, there's a training wheel on it, but it, I'm leaving it right here. Now, another drawback for even redesigns, like, you gotta think the Far From Home stealth suit. Oh, it's it's an improvement, but it is still too tight in the crotch. You're dealing with a kid who is very, very concerned about this thing. So, if it's mushed up in the crotch, though, and it's putting pressure on the crotch, and his bladder's full, Eric... Oh, here we go. Eric, he can't pee. No, Philip, he can't pee in the suit. He would mm. have to take it off. But, here's the, here's the thing, if he's wearing the Iron Spider suit, we're talking about a Tony Stark design style armor. That's a fast, quick change. He probably could take that off. Also, this is post the Iron Man 2 suit, and Iron Man 2, that version of the armor, had a filtration uh, unit in it right. so that you could pee in it. Just like that. So, presumably, Peter Parker's suit that was designed for suborbital altitude, yeah, you could probably pee in okay, that thing. Fine, if it's the Iron Spider suit, I agree with you, it's powered by pee. But if it's not <laughs> the Iron Spider suit, then he's just making a mess of himself. He's just making a big ol' mess. Who's next? Okay, next up, we just mentioned him, Iron Man. Okay, mm. so he has armor, and in, depending on what era it is, it's a gold titanium alloy, but there have been 85 versions over the years, <laughs> culminating in the nanobot weave of the Mark 50 that was even further upgraded into the Mark 85 in Avengers Endgame. I, I almost have my own big question for you to do in a future episode. He's done 85 versions of the suit? And that doesn't mean just 85 suits. He could have built hundreds of suits, right. but just 85 actual upgrades. So then I, I, I gotta wonder, and we can talk about it in a future episode, how long does it take Tony Stark to make an Iron Man suit that he can just like cr crank him out like that? It's like hours? Yeah, it's confusing because even in the movies, he kind of upgrades to a new version of the suit within the span of a movie. But uh, if you think about it, he probably had that in the works for years. And yeah. now he's finally like, okay, time to bring out this one because the Mark 43 got smashed. So we'll bring out the 44. Yeah, it's uh, it's insane how much this guy tinkers. So it's an awesome suit. We love Iron Man's armor. We've made plenty of videos about it, but it sucks. It does <laughs> suck. Why? It is too heavy. It's clunky. It's not flexible. It's armor. It's freaking armor. It's a suit of armor. There's a reason why uh, knights in the medieval times stopped wearing full armored suits because you can't be that flexible in it. True. And there's no shock. So if you get knocked off your horse, be falling into metal, if you bang your head against it, it's going to be worse than falling onto soft grass. Wait. But he doesn't have shock absorption? We've talked about this a number of times. It goes back and forth. If he has shock absorption, uh, I mean, maybe the reason Rhodey got hurt so bad is because his suit turned off. But, like, why would that matter? Is there some kind of, like, um, arc reactor energy that allows for the shocks to work versus not? I mean, you, you could imagine, like, it kind of tries to use, like, repulsors to slow down his descent or yes. something. Yes, repulsors are one thing, but, like, Tony Stark hits sides of buildings. Yeah. He, he runs into stuff all the time without having repulsors to use Newton's third law to put an equal and opposite reaction to that hit. He doesn't know when he's going to run into something. So he's shattered constantly. He is broken. Yeah. He is broken. It doesn't make any sense. I hurt myself today. All of his uh, organs turn into flesh goo. <laughs> Can't take this anymore. Also, a big design flaw arguably, is the fact that the arc reactor is exposed and that everyone knows right. that's what you go for. It's like the uh, Ocarina of Time villains. You just, as soon as you know what the blinking thing is, that's what you aim for, yeah. and then you take down the boss. Like, just go for the arc reactor. Well, I was thinking of the Star Fox uh, villain where he's got, yeah. like, the buttons on his hand, and it's like, well, don't put the button on your hand. Now I know what to do. Uh, that's what it is. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You, you don't want your enemy to know what to aim for when they're trying to take you down. So some examples of when we've seen this suit suck. You're, like, pissed at this. 
the various different versions have sucked in different ways and then Tony Stark improves on it, it's, it's fine. But just some examples of how it interacts with your clothes. Usually, what's interesting, uh, you can wear your normal clothes underneath all versions of the armor. Even back to the, oh, yeah. to the Mark I armor, he's wearing clothes. He well, kind of wraps himself up a little bit, but he's, he's wearing, wearing like, clothes. But his clothes are already like a billionaire's form-fitting bespoke suits, like perfectly sized. If he was wearing like George's Gore-Tex jacket, he'd have to take that off. But the scene in uh, Iron Man 3 is a crazy one where both he and Rhodey are jumping in and out of all different kinds of armor. Oh, right. It's in Miami, they're wearing one layer. That's still <laughs> a layer that seems like it could snag on something, yeah. right? So that's pretty impressive that you can jump in and out while wearing your street clothes. It's yeah. pretty effective. And through the years, those quick changes get more and more efficient. So it starts with like, it takes forever to put the suit on. And then Iron Man 2, he's got the suitcase. Avengers, he can jump out and the thing deploys and it catches in midair, which is crazy. Iron Man 3, he's He's got the Mark 42, which assembles and pieces around right. him. And then eventually, nanotech. Nanotech, where it just comes out of his uh, like chest piece. But even then, that's a lot of weight one has to carry in your chest for the full I, armor to go it, around your body. Is it like the bleeding edge though? Maybe it's like spread through his blood? Yeah, you're, you're talking about like fantasy versus science, well, right? Well, that because said, like, I bet then Tony Stark probably weighs like, 290 pounds or something? Oh yeah, he must. Like, and but it, does the nanobots help his muscles carry this when they're not at use? You oh, know, maybe. Like, yeah. It's kind of crazy. And in the movies, it's not bleeding edge. It's not in his blood. It's all in this external piece anyway. So like, is that helping him carry itself? Like, are there tiny little repulsors that are like moving it to counteract the weight of gravity that he would have to carry? Doesn't totally make sense because it's a movie, but it's okay. We still love it. Here's the answer. He would have super strength if that was the case. Just all the time. He must. As a normal he dude. Must. So yeah, other ways it sucks. In Endgame, it doesn't protect him from snap radiation. Huge design flaw. He dies. <laughs> yeah. And then in Civil War, Bucky and Cap, they aim for that arc reactor, and that's really all they have to do to put him down. When he's the freaking Iron Man, he should be able to take them both down pretty easily, especially once he knocks the shield out of their hands. I mean, literally just put like a little like, you know, hood, like a little Toyota emblem thing right in front <laughs> of it, and that like, that's probably all he needs to do. So overall, Iron Man's armor, pretty cool, just sucks in a couple key ways. But we can we can move on before Philip remembers to ask his question. Wait, right? no, hold on. I was Damn well it. the thing is, <laughs> you already answered the question. He has a filtration system. Yes. But he filtered poo-poo? That much is not clear. We don't know if it's number two. You gotta imagine like what is the piece that allows him to do it? Is his um catheter in there? Is there like no. a, an you astronaut it, style funnel? You think you know how they around? all come flying, all the pieces come flying and like attach? You think one of them is a catheter that just flies <laughs> up into him? <laughs> I think it's more likely to be the astronaut style funnel that goes around it, you know, and then you can just uh, let it go, but it's like yes. connected. Yes, it's like a, a, a wet condom. Most yeah. of those dry sandpaper condoms, do not use those kids. They're fun, but don't. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that my, my brother woke up once in the hospital? Uh, he was like feeling really sick and then, and then he just passed out and he didn't know why and he woke up. And the only thing he knew was he was all alone and there was a cord con coming out of his wiener. Uh, mm. And he started to like tug on it and it turned out that he, it wasn't just because he had a catheter, it was like they had eventually figured out that he had this kidney stone he wasn't able to pass. Oh, it was just yeah. crazy, but he was just like, it was so crazy, man. And then I wasn't allowed to get a boner for weeks. My brother is <laughs> crazy. Wasn't allowed to. He wasn't. He said he had to ice it every morning just to prevent morning wood. Uh, okay. <laughs> what do you mean, okay? You don't have a, a bigger response to this weird, unnecessary anecdote about my brother's say. wiener? <laughs> I listened to that man, your your sister married story last time. <laughs> oh. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. God. I'll be there. Dumbledore, move on. Yeah, he doesn't, I don't think he's got one for poop. Poop is just something that they don't want to address. All right, moving on quickly to Steve Rogers' Captain America. So he has a suit. It's not really necessary for his uh, superpowers. Really, all he needs is a shield, and he's cool, as we saw in Captain America Winter Soldier, once he loses his suit. Uh, but just to talk about his suit, it's a tactical, padded, like, special ops-style suit. Depending on what era he's in, it usually has straps and a belt, and he has a helmet. So it's cool, but it also kind of sucks because... It has limited protection, not like he needs it, but he could use some. It's not bulletproof. He gets shot. He gets hit with Tony Stark's blasts that, right. that hurts him. 
It's not really clear how much it hurts them. It's also pretty easy to track because it is red and white and blue. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, America! He has a stealth version in Winter Soldier, and once he turns it into the Nomad version in, in Infinity War. Well, Infinity War, his stealth version is he weird? Like he like peeled off the star and he like dirty. He peeled it up. off the star, and in Civil War he ripped off the Avengers insignia, which happened off screen, but it was cool when but we saw that. People start like, I think that's Captain America, but like in a crappy suit. And he's got a beard. Is he okay? Do we need to check in on him? Also, you gotta imagine that helmet might block his peripheral vision. Like, he has great senses anyway, and his, he has a magnetic shield that will come back to him as of Age of yeah. Ultron. Also, people pointed out that his uh, suit design in the first cap had both suspenders and a belt, which is redundant, but that was a style back in the 40s, so, well, you know, Well, but no also, judgment. if he's fighting, you know, Scissor Man, he, like, cuts both suspenders, his pants don't fall. So, um, sometimes it's cool, but I would say overall, Cap's, Cap's cooler when he doesn't have a suit on. So, uh, that's my take. I think his suit kind of sucks. Most people are not disagreeing with you that he does better out of clothes. And also, I mean, I don't even need to ask, the dude wears pants. Of course he can pee and he can poop. He's a very practical man. Yeah, yeah, you can just take off, uh, yeah, zip down, I'm sure it's fine. Why Why would uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. in the 40s design a suit that you, you couldn't... In the 40s, that's all people did. That's how you pass the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, Black Panther, T'Challa. So, very interesting suit. It's a vibranium weave. It assembles from a necklace over whatever you're wearing. So if you're if you're wearing it under your clothes, it'll uh, it'll tear off your clothes, I guess. <laughs> oh, if you're wearing it over your clothes, it'll assemble over your clothes. It's very sleek. It's one of the cooler pieces of design tech in the MCU. Uh, it's similar to the Mark 50 nanotech, but it's necklace-based. So it's, uh, it's sleek, but it's also kind of crappy because it's a necklace. Someone can take it off you, you can Ugh. lose it. People lose necklaces and jewelry all the time. It looks like really sharp, like if they pull on it really hard, they just cut his head off. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's just like, if you go on um, one of those carnival rides, it, it might just like uh, loosen in a weird way and it starts to poke your chest. The Gravitron? Like the Gravitron, or what are those ones with the video cameras on it and people pass out when they get slingshotted in the air? Oh, yikes. I don't know. <laughs> I've never been on one of those. Faces of Death? <laughs> <laughs> no, whoa, that is not what I was referencing. <laughs> but you keep bringing that up in conversation. <laughs> so some examples of why this isn't as cool as it could be. In uh, Black Panther, apparently T'Chaka in the past said that he was too fat for the suit, meaning that you have to be in great shape to wear it, which that's not fair. I want, you know, to be able to jump into a Tony Stark style Iron Man suit no matter what shape I'm in. But because the it's designed to be worn by the Black Panther, it's someone who's in peak physical condition. My car has a, a trunk that has a button, and sometimes I overfill the trunk, and you see the trunk go like, come on, and it jams all my stuff in. You want that with a suit? Yeah, yeah, I want to be able to do that. But maybe that's the idea, is like, if you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't wear it. And if you're not an Instagram model, you shouldn't have the suit. But also, like, I bet they have sped up metabolism, right? So, like, how much does it take to become a chubster in, in that scenario? Keep... I don't know. They have a lot of yummy-looking street food that I'm sure if that's you all you You keep bringing ate... that up. That one's yours that you keep bringing up. I want to try the street food in Wakanda. It looks so freaking good. Now, the suit also, the tech has some weaknesses, right? Uh, it's vulnerable to that magnetized vibranium trains that pass. That Remember that amazing third act of Black Panther with the sh VFX, but oh, like yeah. that's how they defeated him was remembering that the trains have magnets on them. It, well, it was a great movie. Third act needed some work, maybe. Uh, yeah. Magnets, though, how do they work? <laughs> Nobody knows. They're one of the greatest mysteries. <laughs> also, we found out in a Black Panther prelude comic, this was actually years before Civil War when he was the Black Panther, but it wasn't King of Wakanda yet. They're vulnerable to vibranium bullets, which, you know, makes sense. It's a vibranium weave. If it's strong enough, uh, sharp enough bullet, uh, fired powerfully enough, it should be able to break through. But you yep. gotta think, like, if they're, like, controlling all of Wakanda's access and, and design weaponry for vibranium, they should be able to build something that can withstand the strongest weapon version of that, right? Yeah. Quick question uh, to let me know the answer to in the comments, uh, if, you, if you know this kind of stuff. Uh, what would happen if you had diamond bullets? And also, like, diamond bullets shooting at a very large diamond. Would it, like, even chip at it, or would it blast right through it? Would it shatter the whole thing? And where can I find these diamond bullets? Oh God, do not tell <laughs> Philip the answer to this question. There's a diamond person he wants to kill. <laughs> yeah. uh, brr, what if you had to use a bathroom in the suit? Actually, yes, you could pee in the suit uh, pretty easily just because it's, it's like the nanotech. It's even faster, I think. It could yeah. quickly retract off you and then you do your business and then it uh, reassembles. You know, if you think about it, the nanotech, like, it doesn't like wrap his dong in vibranium, right? And like and like balls and stuff. It like creates yeah. like just like a general lump 
over the whole area. And then so uh-huh. Polly just like opens up, scares the hell out of somebody in his HP. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think that's Black Panther. Don't look over here, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then it scoops itself back up, puts himself away, and then it seals itself. Uh-oh, Black Panther's back on that school playground. Kids, cover your <laughs> eyes. What are those? <laughs> Gross. All right, let's shift over to the DC universe, because we Yay. haven't forgot about you guys. We love DC just I as much DC. as Marvel, even more than Marvel if we're talking about comics. Are you sure about this? Anyway, okay, starting with Batman. He's all about his suit, right? Because he's not super-powered, so it's all in his suit and in his anger. So he has, depending on what version of the comics and movies you're looking at, typically we're talking about a triple weave Kevlar bodysuit with varying uh, bells and whistles and different features. But most commonly known about it, the suit overall itself is usually not bulletproof. Usually just the chest emblem is bulletproof. That's why it's so flashy and yellow. It's like a trick. It's a theatrical trick by Bruce Wayne to try to lure shooters to aim for his chest. Which we've said before. that draws the fire. Maybe put that like on your foot (laughs) instead of close to your face or vital organs. (laughs) Yeah. So it's not totally practical. Also, let's just be honest, capes are pretty much never practical. Uh, The Incredibles end of mode was 100% right. Right. When she said, your baby has multiple (laughs) <laughs> trying to think of another Edna Mode quote. That uh, multiple no sclerosis? Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> she just said no. She just said no. But anything, I know you're going to say, oh, well, the cape helps them glide, or the cape can be fire resistant. Whatever feature it has, you could just apply that to the rest of the suit. He could just have uh, uh, like fire resistant. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah, like Nightwing. You don't need yeah. a cape. A cape is just for theatrical purposes. It's never practical. A cape is stupid. No capes! I'll give you one idea. But he doesn't use it this way, but he could. Maybe that's his like ninja uh, style is that he hides in the shadows by completely wrapping himself in the cape. And a futuristic version, like a Batman Beyond version, well, he already can turn invisible. You're right, the suit itself turns invisible in that one. Yeah, camo. You yeah. know, there's yeah. there's all kinds of more practical things that our real life military has, has figured out. <laughs> but uh, just to give some examples, various versions have had pieces of him be bulletproof. So like the Dark Knight movies, parts of his armor are bulletproof, but like he wants to be more flexible. So like there are more gaps in his armor that are installed in the Dark Knight versions that leaves him vulnerable to knives right. from the Joker Same. and from Talia al Ghul. Also though, if we're are we counting the fact that in these movies, he often can't turn his head. That's also a problem. Like the more armored you make something, the less flexibility you have. So the more armored versions of it that are more about the silhouette, the less practical and fluid they are. That's why like in a lot of these movies, everyone kind of looks the same in their chunky armor because they're all applying like real world, like a special ops and, and, and what armor would actually right. look like if you wanted to fight with it. And none of it's flashy or cool looking. It's just kind of serves a function and that's it. Yeah. And what's it like when he pees? Okay, so uh, depending on the suit, like if it's in pieces, you would think Bruce Wayne would put that in there because, you know, he's like, he stakes out stuff all the time. The guy's out all night. He's going to have to pee at some point. He's got to stay hydrated. Actually, in uh, the comics, Batman has admitted to peeing in the suit. There is a uh, certain comics where he's done that. And in Batman and Robin, George Clooney said that he had to pee in the suit because in the movies, they have pretty much all the actors in all these superhero movies, they all admit... It's, it sucks to wear these suits all day when they're shooting because they have to pee. And like with Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns, they had to sew her into the suit. So they and had to like, like vacuum undo the stitching. Too, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they had yeah. to come with all these things. Uh, I'm not surprised that George Clooney pissed all over the character. I see the comment sections on all you guys. <laughs> and Joel Schumacher peeing all over the franchise. <laughs> had to do it one last time before all this goes away for good. All right, let's move over to the Man of Steel Superman. His suit is a Kryptonian skin suit, according, you know, to the Superman myth. It was mm-hmm. the, the the cloth that he was wrapped in when he arrived on Earth. Um, Which makes it sound like not a great costume for battle, by the way. A baby swaddle thing or whatever. Yeah, but he also, like, again, doesn't need it because he's Superman. It doesn't matter what his suit is. It's all just for the symbolism of his mm-hmm. character. He, he wears, you know, red and blue colors because he's supposed to symbolize truth, justice, the American way. It's not designed for practicality. It was designed to, like, sell comic books in, in the 30s or 40s. So he has some of the problems, practical problems. He never really has pockets or utility belt. He has nowhere to carry things. And he has that problem that we were talking about with Peter Parker. If he's trying to hide that he's wearing this, if he's always wearing it underneath his clothes, he has to, like, go somewhere undo his clothes and and then leave them in the phone booth, right? But at least he has super speed. Oh, does he leave his clothes in the phone booth? Yeah. I always imagine he, he put he presses them real small and he, 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 he keeps it a 
his mouth. Hold it like up his gum. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, open your mouth, Superman. I want to see your clothes. <laughs> say, ah. Oh. Oh. It's just a yeah. pair of glasses in there. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> just people keep thinking that the a person got naked in this in this phone booth. He is fast enough to where he could like fold them and tuck them somewhere where no one would find Stop them. Stop at home <laughs> really quick. Put them away. Yeah. You never want to tuck things outside in just some corner because you don't you don't know who's been there. As our friend Ryan discovered, he, he was like inside. He was afraid to get germs, and then he noticed that a homeless person was peeing on the crosswalk button, and you oh. never know. That made him believe that every crosswalk button had been peed. It was the greatest form of. Um, that's pedestrian a fact. terrorism. That's a fact. Doesn't like Zod and the others, don't they wear actual armor? as Because the, they're actual Yes, soldiers. they do. And in uh, the, the DCEU, David Escoyer has said that Superman's suit is really a Kryptonian undergarment. That they, they all wear similar type suits like that when they're walking around. But when they're going into armor, they wear armor over it. But it's because he's, you know, he's a refugee to Earth and he's more power than everyone else is, relatively speaking. Uh, he doesn't need that armor. But yeah, uh, it was designed to just be like house clothes. Just something you wear as you're walking around your Krypton house. That used to be a thing, I think, like undergarments and stuff, especially men and like Dan Lee from Streetcar Named Desire or whatever, like kind of like look yeah. or whatever, or our dads probably. Like <laughs> men just used to wear so many layers, like they couldn't ever just expose their skin. Uh, especially if they're Mormon. I believe. Or, you know, it, it's, just, it's really the equivalent of like uh, sweatsuits. Like, you just design something that looks lumpy and goofy, but imagine, like, if we went to another solar system and we were super-powered, it'd be just, like, our sweatsuits and our boxers that yeah. we're fighting in. It's like our quarantine outfits, basically, where it's like, yeah. do I really need to actually put on, like, real armor just to, to go to right. the bathroom? No. And then, I, I don't have to ask about the pain for, for Superman, because I know that he uses his freezing breath to make it ice, and then he can throw it. Right, that's what happens. It's established. I, I, we spent some time looking into this. We don't even know if Superman excretes waste. Like, if, just to fit in with the rest of humanity, probably he would go to the bathroom, but like... Just like text in there or whatever, and then just like gets yeah. up and, and like leaves. <laughs> His metabolism works completely different. Than, well, it's like Vision. Ours. We talked about this with Vision, didn't we? Where it's yeah, like, did, yeah. Vision might want to do it to like learn. Or something. I haven't actually ever eaten anything before. All right, let's move on to Wonder Woman. So you, there's a lot you could talk about with her outfit, right? She's wearing Amazonian battle armor. She's got boots, bracelets, the tiara. Boots. Uh, boots. boots. Gotcha. What did I say? No, I think that oh, is what you oh, said. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> I see. So yeah, there's some problems with this in that her body is very exposed. You know, she's all arms yeah. and legs. But she's also an Amazonian goddess. She doesn't really need armor covering every inch of her. Also, it looks like Wonder Woman 84 is bringing in that new Golden Eagle armor that fixes but, all that. No, but that thing looks like it's all pinch points. <laughs> Yuck. So really, I would see the drawbacks with this kind of outfit is like, you know, as we saw in A League of Their Own, it's hard to slide in a skirt. Yeah. Uh, and she does a lot of sliding. We see her sliding when she's fighting those German soldiers in the first Wonder Woman. In the trailer for Wonder Woman 84, she does some sliding. She does in Justice League. She's sliding everywhere. Though, you'd think you'd get some friction burns. But her thigh meat is, like, impenetrable. Like, so it's the same thing you're saying about Superman, where, you know, technically he doesn't need to need to wear anything. She's just living it sure. up. She's Miami style. Yeah, but it's also, like, does that mean, like, the horses don't hurt them either when they're riding those horses with bare thighs? Because if you do any... I've never ridden a horse before. But uh, I imagine there's a reason you wear jeans and you, you have padding down there because it, it'll chafe up pretty bad. I'm pretty sure that the horses are not like Amazonian powered as well. <laughs> there. But then that would mean that as like with each ride, like these powerful women with their powerful thighs are like grinding down the horse sides. Like oh. those horses get split in two after like three rides. <laughs> Guaranteed. Oh <laughs> Poor things. It's like you're trying to sell us weak horses. No horses will split into it for three rides. Guaranteed. Are your money back? Disposable horses. Come and get them. It's where they get the idea of the horse suit. So it was a horse was split into, and then a guy got in the front. That's right. Well, doesn't she also wear high heels? She does. There's sometimes some of her outfits. Uh, she wears high heels, um, it, which make it really hard to run. But that's not part of her traditional uh, outfit, at least when she's going into battle in the DCEU. But the benefit is she can pee in it. She's she can a pop a squat. Yeah, she wins for pee ability. Yeah. Of all these. Papa it's Squad is the uh, the disgusting brother of Papa Smurf, who uh, is in jail <laughs> in Smurf Town. <laughs> that is me, Papa Squad. Even Gargamel fears Papa Squad. That guy's not okay. So let's talk about the Flash. Now, really, his suit just has to be based out of a material that won't like burn up and right. fall apart. 
when he goes at super speed. So uh, most versions are made out of some silica-based quartz and fabric. Batman says in some comics it's a material that NASA uses to protect the spacecraft during re-entry. Mm -hmm. It's like high friction, durable stuff. But it sucks because because it has to be so flexible, it, there's little protection if you do get shot. But the guy can outrun bullets, so it's not like he's too worried about gunfire or punches or anything like that. Unless he's depowered, but in that case, he's got other problems to worry but about. But he, honestly, he gets his ass kicked all the time whenever he stops. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he does not really protect it. That's why you join a Justice League. So you have other people who can have your back for those situations. Yeah, kids, if you're like being bullied and you feel like, what am I supposed to do about it? You find other kids and you form some sort of league or um, like, you know, this, you, this gang and you... League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. My brother was in a gang for this exact reason, actually. Is that how he uh, had that kidney stone? Yeah, exactly. It was his initiation. Everybody has There's to a kidney stone, stone in, kidney stone out gang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, to answer the question of his uh, urination ability, it doesn't really matter. He's, he's got super speed. He could just take off his uh, suit real quick, do his business. He actually probably does take his clothes home. Why not? It takes them like half a second to get home. It's a lot easier than stuffing it in your gums, Superman. All right, let's uh, shift back to the Marvel Universe uh, and talk about Daredevil. Now, he's not in the MCU yet, but let's talk about the Netflix Charlie Cox version because that's the one we want to be in the MCU. Yeah. We love that guy. So Daredevil has padded body armor. Sometimes it's leather. Usually it's known to be leather. In the Daredevil season one, season two, he has Melvin Potter build his armor for mm -hmm. him. And the red areas protect from knives and uh, blades and things like that. Uh, the black areas are stronger. They're are usually bulletproof but because you know anything leather is super hot it's not comfortable to be wearing that all day and to be fighting in it yeah it, it's kind of crazy to be wearing leather for all this also there was a, an issue in season two like melvin potter was working on it, but it was like a work in progress so anytime he gave him a piece of it he's like uh, this is what i got for you right now uh, and then matt murdoch would be like well i need this He's like, all right, we'll take it, but uh, it's got some gaps in it. So also uh, in Daredevil season three, because Daredevil is a masked vigilante and no one knows who he is, People can impersonate and steal your identity, as we see in season three, Benjamin Poindexter right. impersonates Daredevil and gets him into a lot of trouble. Right. So that's another huge uh, drawback that we haven't really brought up because most of these people are either like not street level or they're they're so unique that like. You know, no one can impersonate Spider-Man unless they also have spider abilities. Can he swing from a web? No, we can't. He's a pig. But also, like, I don't know, this one doesn't sound that bad. Like, props for rocking your leather kink so publicly, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we never really think about that with him, but, you yeah, know, sure. He likes the sweaty part. So he probably could pee in this because the, the Netflix version of it, like, it, it's not like a crazy onesie. Like, he could take off parts of it and do his business. Uh, and it's based on normal clothes. So, yeah, yeah. He, can, he can do his business. Thing. It does have the drawback, though, if you get any, like, pee in it for some reason, for any reason. That's your kink. Leather pants are so hard to put on when they're wet. So, just saying, oh. if they get wet and he has to, like, put them back on, very hard. Have you tried to put on leather pants in the rain or something? No, I found these wet leather pants. <laughs> <laughs> they were already wet. <laughs> yeah. No no reason. No given. explanation. I was dying of thirst. So, let's talk about another suit that we've kind of avoided, but it is its own separate tech with its own separate, like, history behind it. It is the Ant-Man and Wasp tech, the, the Hank Pym and Scott mm -hmm. Lang stuff. This was designed based on a motorcycle-style suit that was, uh, it had parts of it that were all designed to disperse the, the pin particles throughout it to shrink all the contents within it. I think this sucks, Philip, because this resizing tech of the MCU is super inconsistent and poorly designed. The triggers are on the thumbs. And the moment he puts it on, he's like, what is this? And just puts his hands together and shrinks. <laughs> yeah. So as you're fighting, you have to make sure not to touch the thing that is half an anything. inch away from where your thumb is at resting state. It's stupid. Yeah, he probably is getting like, you know, a tendon like problem over time of trying to keep his, his thumbs up all day like, yeah uh, yeah it's stupid. stupid and yeah huge plot hole about the inconsistent sizing thing that's like the biggest plot hole in the marvel one thing that drives me crazy in the first ant-man movie he takes the the resizing pym disc when he's in the quantum realm and just kind of loosely shoves it in his belt buckle and it's like starting to float out he's like no it's good and closes it and then you know re-triggers it and then he resizes it, and everything's fine and he really just like mcgruber duct taped <laughs> something together and then all the science aligned perfectly 
What the hell? Yeah. Also, one thing I would point out, it's got this bulky, stupid helmet that does not have good peripheral vision. And the goggles are red, so like he throws what he thinks is a water truck, but it's a fuel truck. He can't tell the difference <laughs> between what's in this truck. And then in Endgame, all the quantum entanglement causes him to change ages inside the suit. There's a little baby who, Philip, pees in the suit. Oh, perfect. So it's got some pluses. You could, but it's not designed to be peed in it. You know, you you really got me on the the eye goggles. If I'm I'm picturing the helmet really quick, it really is like it's not like they're like up against his eyes like uh, Daredevils, you know, even though Daredevil's blind, but like right up there, it's like this removed thing, but then it's not like a visor. It's still just these little holes. So all they did yeah. was cut into his peripherals. That's it. It makes no sense. But a suit, it is like a motorcycle suit. So it looks like they got a zipper down there, but like at oh, that yeah. point, why does it matter? You're wearing the stupidest suit. But one last one we have to mention, even though this isn't a suit, but it is, you know, wardrobe with, with some implications. Hulk's stretchy purple pants. Ooh. Okay, so he does upgrade his his wardrobe throughout the films. In the first Hulk movie, he, he just wears whatever pants Banner was wearing. In Age of Ultron, his stretchy pants are right there in the lab on standby, ready to change into them if anything bad starts to happen. In uh, Ragnarok, he wears gladiator armor. In Endgame, Smart Hulk has like a it's stretchy close. spandex suit yeah. that he could wear at any time. Yeah, he's, he's just going to the big and tall store. They're really just there for decency's sake. In real life, if someone had this ability, he would not care. He wouldn't care. He'd be a nudist. If you become this like giant green monster, you're not like, oh no, my dong, my giant green dong. But what is good is if you have to pee or poop, you just wiggle those things down. And we found this great picture that we're gonna show you. Yep, that's, that's all you gotta do. And you're ready to go. So to answer the question, Philip, who has the worst suit? Uh, there are lots of dumb character designs throughout all of comics that we didn't mention. We're just talking about the big major players who like the movies have said, isn't this cool? Like, doesn't this look awesome? <laughs> Using that judgment, Ant-Man, I think, has the stupidest, worst, crappiest suit in the, in the films. Awesome. It's the least functional. The tech is stupid. It's inconsistent how the tech works. The suit design just doesn't seem practical. It looks uncomfortable, by the way, and it's really unflattering. And yeah, he pees himself in it. So <laughs> why does he why does he need it? Who has the best suit? Well, in my opinion, I think like the best of Marvel seems to be Black Panther's suit. Seems like the sleekest. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty flexible. Uh, it can do pretty much everything Tony Stark's suit can do, at least in the MCU. That's how they're they're making it look. In the DC side of things, I Batman has an awesome suit. That guy can think of anything to put in there, but really in terms of like overall design, I think Wonder Woman's got everything she needs there. She's super powered, so she doesn't need all the coverage and it's hot and she can pee so easily. She's comfortable. Well, you have to be so careful because you just reminded me of Power Girl. Power oh. Girl and her like her boob window. Have no, you ever so seen stupid. the comic where they have this stupid boob window, makes no sense, never made any sense ever. <laughs> and then you ever see when they try to justify it? No, no, what do they say? She, oh God. She's of course like in tears, like the real reason I have a boob window is because I've always looked up to Superman and he has a logo there because he knows who he is, but I don't know who I am, what my symbol is. So I left it empty and filled it with titties. Like, it's like, no, that's not why you you cut it that out. That is the, you directly quoted what they said. It's I pretty it close, titties. it's pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> what is, oh! I, I dropped my Narasha's mug. Uh, it was filled with titties. <laughs> I got scared. I bent my titty. Um, it's just so stupid, you would have left it blank. You wouldn't have cut it out. Yeah, put anything else there. Instead of cutting it out. Yeah, TBD. All right, well, let us know down in the comments below who you think has the best and the worst suit. Join this fashion roundup. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Why is it a rave? Okay, uh, well, before we move on to some bite-sized questions, now that we are spending most of our time dealing with all kinds of streaming content that's like everything we're doing, it's really more important than ever than to be able to access whatever we need. Well, thanks to our friends at ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Thank you so much. It means we get to make the show. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't exist without you. Yeah, um, also, they thank you for protecting our privacy and security online. And in addition to doing that, they also help you unlock movies and shows that are only available oh, in yes. other countries. Shows like Doctor Who, Rick and Morty, they're not available on the US 
US Netflix, but they right. are on the UK version of Netflix, which yeah. a lot of you are asking me, like, how do I watch Rick and Morty right now? And I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you, but now we kind of do with ExpressVPN. That's all you got to use. You get the app, you change your location to just one of the locations where you can do that, so like the UK for that, and then you just like refresh Netflix or Hulu, and it thinks you're a Brit now, uh, and it gives you an accent, it's hilarious, but then you can access any streaming service just as if you're there. And ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. There are hundreds of VPNs out there. ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream HD without any problems. The crazy thing I've always found about it is the fact that it works on, like, everything. Like, on, on it sounds like a thing you could only use on your computer or something, but it works on your phone, your, like, media consoles, your gaming consoles, whatever, your smart TV, which is crazy. So you can watch whatever you want on whatever your device, your personal device, your big screen, whatever, without any problem. Yeah, and if you visit our special link right now at expressvpn.com slash big Q, you can get an extra three months free of ExpressVPN for free. You can support our show and watch what you want and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash big Q. Big cuties right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> and these big cuties are gonna answer some bite-sized questions. Philip's gonna tackle them. You ready, big cutie? Big cutie number one. Oh, uh, big cutie. <laughs> you guys have been cutie. to camp. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's hear it. Philip Crackle Jackal asks. That's not his name. Crackle Jackal. His name is Crack Jackal. He's on our asks, Discord, yeah. No, he's yeah. not a Crack Jackal. Crackle Jackal. A Crack Jackal is a little rodent that steals your crack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the question is In Star Wars, did lightsabers come oh, before blasters? Jackal. Like, was there a time in Star Wars history when everyone ran around with lightsabers like swords in human medieval history? Great question, actually, if you think about it. It's what came first, yeah. you know, the, the blaster or the egg? Uh, and the egg being a lightsaber. I did think it was Crackle Jackal, but I think you're right, it is Crack Jackal, and now I'm rethinking not every conversation I've had with this person. <laughs> but it's a decent logic that this person's uh, approaching with, right? That swords predated guns in our history by thousands of years in our world. But not in Star Wars, actually, not exactly. Um, which is kind of a fascinating thing. It's not explicitly stated exactly when these things uh, came about. Specifically, blasters are, are almost the most vague. But we do know a little bit about the creation of the first lightsabers, the proto-sabers, the first blade. And the earliest, like, most crude device that you could even call a lightsaber was a Bic lighter. All I do is flick my Bic. Uh, it was the res <laughs> it's, it's when they were experimenting with, and here's where you basically get your answer, they were experimenting with a blaster shot that they were able to freeze and keep at a fixed length. So a ah. lightsaber, the earliest form of a lightsaber, is a blaster shot. Obviously there you can infer that then they already had blasters, if that's what they were experimenting with, to make lightsabers. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't medieval times in Star Wars. It just Medieval means, times! Yeah, <laughs> it just me. uh, just where dorks go for birthdays. I dreamed I was a mighty warrior. I, I want to awesome. go to I actually really want to go. No one's ever invited me. That's the only reason I'm not mean about it. And I know you've been a number of times. It's, it would be like our version of, of medieval times where the ancient Jedi, their ancestors, did use metal blades initially, and then someone did invent guns and blasters, and then someone did invent lightsabers. So it's just like our history. We, you know, metal swords, then guns, then uh, somebody's just going to invent lightsabers. Elon Musk, you're doing stupid <laughs> Change it to this. So, no, weirdly, Blasters came first, but you still get your medieval times in Star Wars. Yay! Yay! All right, next question. I Eat Zebra asks, who would not win okay. in a fight? <laughs> not okay. It's not okay. Trophy hunter. Uh, who would win in a fight, Darth Sidious or Thanos, with the Infinity Gauntlet? Hmm. With the Gauntlet, right. Okay. You would think that this would be a straightforward question with like a straightforward answer. You've got the Infinity Gauntlet, and we were so used to it being this the ultimate device. First of all, though, I'm going to say I'm only going to compare the MCU Thanos and not comic book Thanos, because uh, I feel like it's only fair to compare the two versions of the characters that we know the most, and you know, so we should just stick to the movie versions for both. But first, I'll establish on a, in a one-on-one -on -one fight without the Gauntlet. Thanos would get his ass handed to him. His big thick ass would just would wipe the floor. This is based on the idea that Thanos has to physically fight a lot of characters that we've seen. Captain America holds his own against Thanos for a bit. Tony Stark has drawn blood. Thor killed him in the most traditional way. You kill humans, lopping off their head. Oh, my head. So that means that at the end of the day, He's basically kind of just a really tough mortal, basically, but he's susceptible to a traditional physical attack. Palpatine doesn't need to engage people physically.
His force lightning alone could cause incredible damage from like pretty far away. He doesn't even need to get close. But also, this is probably his bigger danger. He's got this insane level of telepathic abilities. I have been every voice you have ever heard. The more recent movies explored that more. He could spend years if he wanted to just driving Thanos mad. He could trick him into killing himself for some reason. He could do just so many things by getting into his mind. Yeah, it's his manipulation skills and levels right. of deceit, you know. That's that's what's scary. I said it previously, him. he played Master Yoda like a number of times. He, he did. The guy's yeah, like a oh, genius. Yeah. yeah. But Thanos with the gauntlet. And let's assume I mean, all the stones. Now we've yeah. got a fight. Except yeah. I don't even know if it's a fight at that point. You would think, but we're forgetting Palpatine has also not just telepath abilities, incredibly powerful telekinetic abilities. He can lift a fleet of ships with his mind. Meanwhile, Spider-Man almost pulled Thanos' gauntlet off. So Palpatine, oh, yeah. yeah, he could straight up just like, mm, Thanos' fingers are straight now. And then he just pulls <laughs> the gauntlet right off. And shit, like my, my man could like, just be like, and ha ha. And he could wear the gauntlet himself. Everybody yeah. dead, force lightning in one hand. Tickle stones in the other, like he could just do anything. Thanos yeah. has one chance, one way to win it that I can think of. He has to plot to kill Palpatine Sidious from afar, from so far away that he's not even on his radar, because Palpatine right. would sense a threat nearby. So he has to be doing it from very far away and then be wearing the full thing and then snap his fingers to just kill Palpatine wherever the hell he is before Palpatine even is aware of the MCU in any way. Right. Thanos from really, really far with the gauntlet can win, but there's actually another issue here that I realized. If Thanos is not caught up on Star Wars lore, uh, he <laughs> might not properly think this through, and he might be like, aha, and he turns Palpatine to ash, or, or more traditionally, he pops his head off, right? But then he would actually end up losing because Palpatine can survive beyond traditional death. That's right. He can't turn into a force ghost, that's a light side thing, but it's established in Clone Wars and, and things that Sith spirits can inhabit places, objects, even people. So he could, if he's like in the process of being killed or like, oh no, something's happening to me. He could just jump into another body or another item and continue to exist. So then Thanos thinks his job is done. He's, he's on his planet, he's retired, he's cooking that stew. And he like, he goes to take a, a poop on his like super private middle of the nowhere toilet and then just like, boom. It's not a toilet. It's Palpatine, Poopatine, Ghost, and just ah, like, gold. just exactly. Uh, it's like Freddy Krueger. Exactly, the worst nightmare, Freddy Krueger. There's like kind of no way to beat that. I don't think he would like think. Let me make sure he also can't turn into you know a Sith spirit. So I think Darth Sidious wins. Cool. Yeah, based on how they've overpowered the guy throughout all <laughs> yeah. the film series, I don't really know. If He's kind can of kill him. god. Yeah. There are characters in Star Wars that are more powerful, but we can get those into those another time. Yeah, another question. All right, uh, third question. Our <laughs> good friend Carol on Discord asks, mm. but <laughs> I like this. Between <laughs> Philip and Eric, who would be Rick and who would be Morty? Hmm. Uh, what's what's funny is so I, you sent me this question and I immediately had an answer and then I immediately flipped the answer when I thought about <laughs> it more. So I think what the truth is here is just originally when we first met, 2006, I was very much your corrupter. Uh -huh. You were just this like innocent little lass and and, she, <laughs> and you like you were like light on your feet and you were just so like hopeful about the world. Second then, guessing. Oh jeez, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I would be like, no, it's, we're not gonna get in trouble. Just come on, <laughs> let, let's kill this dude. And you, I slowly like got you to like go along with like the more and more crazy things. And then there was that college orgy. Oh. Well, now that is some f up shit. See a previous episode if you need to. But you were always or the one that was episode. like, oh, did we not? I don't know. Uh, I don't think we've talked about that one. We did, we did, we did. People sent me a lot of messages about it. Oh, okay. Um, oh, oh, a different, oh, okay. I know what you're saying. Different yeah. orgy. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, you just set up another question. Uh, yeah. But, so I was very much your corrupter, and I think the first minority you ever met. Then, as we aged, I think now our roles have flipped. Because... People don't really know this about you, and you it's not that you're you're like fake, or it's not that you're like, you know, it's they don't know who you really are. It's just I have a very specific version of you that I interact with, and that guy is much more Rick now, who is like <laughs> like he's seen it all, 
and he's like uh -huh. a, a bit, a way more grizzled. And I feel like now <laughs> I'm the optimist. It's like I don't know, Eric. Maybe they want to be our friends. No, no, no. Yeah, no, you can't trust them. They're uh, <laughs> everyone's just out to kill us. You know what's interesting is like the series of Rick and Morty. The characters are now have started to bleed over into each other. Where yeah. now like Rick is a very Morty esque Rick, and Morty is a very Rick esque Morty. So it's kind of like they they kind of go back and forth and sharing the qualities as we have. Yeah, no, you're the killer now. I know what you've done. From a certain point of view. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, it's time for Question Box. The box of mails with a couple Question bags box. and a couple boxes. Did you put a stamp on it? No, you didn't. The real truth is we can't pay for our P.O. box right now. <laughs> How it's sad a, is that? It's we can't just afford that true. Mail sent to us. We had to send it to ourselves. We asked for questions and we just pretended that they mailed them in. Our P.O. box literally has a lock on it right now that we don't have a key to. And a Ugh. private security guard. It's like, oh, is this your box? <laughs> Dumbledore <laughs> no, said. No, 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 it's not that us. If you were to come here, we're yeah. going to put you in Slytherins. Uh, I'm Snape. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this question, the, who was this was asked by uh, an audience member, but they did not mail it. We mailed it to ourselves. Eric, I'm assuming this is to both of us, but uh, they really want to know about you. Uh, what was your most embarrassing, and it's appropriate for this episode, wardrobe malfunction? Oh, okay. Um, I seen your titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Philip has uh, been both a witness and a cause of yeah. lots of my wardrobe malfunctions. Like, give me that boob window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. And including like shaving things into my head that I, I didn't know were there. Anyway, other question. So the one that comes to mind is at our old improv theater, iOS, RIP. We used to have um, a couple parties. You know, we would have our, our Dell Close Awards. It's like our Dundies. And then we would have like a, an annual Christmas party. I can't remember which one this was. I want to say it was the Dell Awards because it would always end with like they emptied out the theater and they would just have like a dance floor. And then all these people who were like too kind of nervous to actually like make a move on, you could just dance with them and maybe that would turn into something. I was wearing like my express suit that I got in college that was very slim fitting, but I got it because it made me feel like Ryan Gosling when I wore it. It was like this nice silver well cut suit, but I had gained some weight, but I'm like, it still fits, it still fits. So like I'm on the stage dancing, Flo Rida's apple bottom jeans comes on, and then, so I'm dancing with uh, these two fly honeys, uh, who I can't get away with saying that. No, no. Well, people stop believing the story is real immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just like, just these two women who I was like on various different teams with, and we were just dancing, we are having a good time. And it's the part where it's like, shorty went low, 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 and you dance, uh, and then you go down, no, and Eric, they're supposed to go down, not you. The I went down. We all down. did. We all went no. down together. It's not shell. Um, it's a little bit softer now. God. Well, my ego went a little bit softer then because my because. pants ripped open when I hit the floor. They went from uh, <laughs> nut sack to butt <laughs> crack. <laughs> <laughs> Nut sack to butt sack, just <laughs> to butt sack, a uh, big rip, and I immediately left the whole party. I went home and I waddled my way back to my car and went home. The next day, a friend of mine texted me a video, and he's like, "Hey, it looks like you were having fun last night." You could pinpoint the second Philip where I realized. <laughs> that my pants ripped in half, and like my face, like I was like smiling. And I go. <gasps> In the video, <laughs> and I just kind of like, uh, you know, up. penguin uh, waddle off the stage, and I said, "Buddy, you you can't send that to anyone." He's like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Wait, I shouldn't have told him. I thought he knew." And then he watched it 30 seconds later. <laughs> he ripped your pants, and I thought he was gonna send it out to everyone, but the next day his dog went missing. <laughs> oh God! So he, and got he forgot distracted. to send it. And I felt so bad. I think he ended up finding his dog, but my heart broke. I'm like, did I will his dog to go missing? So that or did you take his dog? Back? That's what it sounds like. It sounds like you stole his dog. Like, I didn't steal his dog. I would never. You're the do Rick. That. You're the, the Rick now. He's the sweetest dog in the world. But he did find the dog. We were really worried that he wouldn't find the dog. But he did find the dog. But he had forgotten about the video, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Was it? No, it was um.
Oh, yeah. How many dogs have you made go missing at this point? <laughs> Um, countless. I, I like the image of the pants splitting and then you like standing up suddenly like <laughs> unsure what to do and I just like my heart breaks for you because had it been a different time a teacher would have walked over and put like a sweater around your waist and be like come with me honey. <laughs> uh uh. It's What's okay, it called? Malarkey? Okay. Uh... Monarchy. <laughs> Mal- <laughs> no, a, a woman's first period is not called malarkey. You know nonsense. <laughs> That's what Biden's referring to. Ah, period. <laughs> it's all monarchy. <laughs> uh, kids, look it up. What's so funny is, for some reason, when you said uh, uh, wardrobe malfunction, when this person asked that, my like brain forgot the possibility of like malfunctions. I was thinking of like stupid choices you've made of things you wore. That's also a malfunction. That's a brain, yeah, malfunction, a brain malfunction. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That fits. What, what came to mind for me, I know you, you've thought I've worn stupid things before, but I'm very proud of that Toon Squad jersey. <laughs> <laughs> it was in college, and this was before you joined our, our comedy group. And our com- what people don't necessarily know about TSF, our old comedy group, is it was it had the stupidest stat you've ever heard associated with the comedy group. The like world's largest improv comedy group, which is like no yeah. one cares about the largest one, but it was yeah. the largest one, so it was this huge thing. So it was really hard to like climb the ranks and get noticed. And it was my first semester in there, and I was trying to get noticed. And then uh, one of the like the popular guys, uh, who was like the head of the whole thing, kind of was like, "Hey, uh, I want to I want to talk to you about something." I was like, "Yeah, anything, Jameson." Uh, and he's like, uh, I, "I've got this opportunity. We're gonna do a haunted house for kids. We're, we just want some of our best performers, to kind of just going." And he's obviously trying to sweet talk me into volunteering, doing volunteer work. Right. But I'm like, absolutely. He thinks I'm a great performer. I can't wait. And he's like, "Yeah, so if you can figure out some sort of costume or whatever, and then and then just show up at this." Uh, this well, wait, address. it's a Halloween thing. It was, was it? A, it was a Halloween, ha- like a haunted house. Oh, like a maze, like a haunted maze. Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing? Okay. Uh, and so he's like, so just show up there. Uh, it'll be set up, and then we'll meet you inside or whatever. And so I, uh, I've always been poor, but never more poor than when I was in college. Uh, I was literally homeless a short time after this. Uh, oh, but yeah. That's a, I, oh, the, another story. Oh, another story, story. yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, so I want to do the thing, but I don't have anything even close to resembling a costume. I wear the same clothes every day already in this, in this scenario. <laughs> so I just like like find some some stuff in the house and some some makeup and stuff and I just like make this thing happen and I just put it together and then in Gainesville you remember that you're poor the only way to get anywhere is the buses because you can ride for free because you're a student ID and so I walk to the bus stop and everyone is staring at me the whole way and this is still close to Halloween like the Halloween's the next day so it shouldn't be so weird but everyone keeps like making all these weird eyes at me and then the bus driver comes and the door opens and she's like in, uh, immediately disgusted by me and I'm like I really didn't think I went that far and so I, I go inside and she just has eyes on me the whole time just like judgment and I'm like feeling really bad about this about this thing I'm just wearing you know uh, like like some black pants that I had and this black shirt that I had I I'm like this is weird that it's, it's so bad but I arrive and I go find Jameson and I'm like hey uh, I'm, I'm here to be uh, spooky scary or whatever uh, and he's like, oh, uh, um, are you sure this is the look you want to go with? Uh, and, and I do not process what is wrong with this look. So he has to explain to me why. See, I thought it'd be fun to hide in the shadows and like jump out at people. So I, I'm wearing black pants and a black shirt, but I literally just used black makeup and just covered my face completely in no. black makeup. And I just have a black face. And I've just no. been walking around no. UF campus in blackface. To spook in, Gainesville, people, Florida, in Gainesville, Florida, where, where, where the, people might, might be wearing that for other reasons. Uh, so I completely oh, like put that together. No. I was like, you think people will put that? To-? And he's like, yes, Ed, that is only what you look like, is that you just showed there up. There is in one blackface. context for this. <laughs> That's oh not, because it's not a known scary thing of just like, oh no, oh. the guy with the blackface. <laughs> like, it's scary for a different reason. So I like had to wash it off and just kind of be the like, the, the screamy guy with like a gray muddy face which is also yeah. still kind of black face like yeah. doesn't matter how how exactly. dark the shade yeah. is yeah yeah <laughs> and like i like that like i'm a minority so maybe i would get away with it but by putting on black face first of all no i don't get away with it but second I, you can't tell i'm a minority either so i just could easily be a white guy right. doing it oh uh, that bus driver yeah she but, uh, had your number <laughs> yes, so she, I, I, I connected like, oh, I've very much insulted a lot of people on this walk. That is a wardrobe malfunction yeah, at its core. A brain malfunction, yeah. Do not look for pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, it oh boy. Hey, you know what? In TSF, we had all kinds of wardrobe malfunctions. Our friend Liz wore two pop collars. 
What a mistake. Okay. She was trying to impress with not one, but two popped collars. Oh, what That's a goofball. On her first ball. day, yeah. Oh, boy. She writes for uh, Jackbox now. Yeah, she's kicking ass. Yeah. Good for her. Hey, that's our show. Reminder <laughs> to join our official Discord by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. That's where we're going to see your questions, your big questions. Mm -hmm. Our friend Carol, who's been on the show a couple times, she's on Discord. She's sending us great questions. That yeah, can be you. Yeah, one of the other questions was also from Discord today. Yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, jump on our Discord, uh, support our channel, help keep us alive during this difficult time, and you can get your questions up close and personal with us. You can get an audio version of the show by subscribing to New Rockstar's Big Question wherever you get your podcasts. And for this episode, thanks to everyone who submitted your great questions. We love these this week. Reminder that you can uh, send us your big questions on Twitter using the hashtag Big Question, or you can mail us at our P.O. Box. Hopefully we'll be able to start paying for it soon. We'll be able to, <laughs> be able to crack in there and see all your great questions. Uh, you can follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, follow Philip at Philip Molina, and subscribe to New Rockstars here on YouTube to get too much information on all this stuff you care about. See you next week. Sorry Bye. if I offended you. I, I learned my lesson. <laughs>